Hello and welcome back to another tutorial guys and in this one we're looking at security through obscurity. So how do we secure our website uh, using obscurity? Now obscurity is uh, the act of uh, giving away very little as little information as possible on your website to avoid uh, giving away too much information that hackers can use to access your website so let me give you a very uh, simple example here so we have our login page here so let me try to enter something uh, just some gibberish here and then hit the login button okay so what you get here is an error message saying uh, the following errors occurred uh, no such email was found now this looks uh, like an innocent uh, message right there however this is too much information because now if I'm a hacker <coughs> excuse me I already know that this email that I've typed here does not exist so if for example I type in an email that exists in on this website and hit login so you're going to see now that it says wrong password okay so which means if I'm a hacker I'm going to know that this email actually exists on this website so all I need to do now is to find the password. So I'm giving away already too much information. What would be obscure is to simply say wrong email or password. No matter if the email is wrong or the password is wrong, I can simply say wrong email or password for both cases. So in that way, the hacker does not know what email exists on my system and what email does not or the password that exists and the password that does not so this is just one example of how to be obscure about uh, what information you give away so in order to rectify this problem we can simply go to our um, uh, login page this is our folder right here so let me open my uh, login page here in the text editor let me change my preferences so that this looks a bit uh, color scheme. Yeah, that's much better. All right, so here we have, uh, this is the login section here and it evaluates and then gives us a result. This is where it says the following errors occurred and we get a result. So what we have to look at is the class and see where the error is actually originating from. So let's go back to our folder and go into the classes folder and then let me get the login.php class. All right. So here that's where we find our error message. Uh, this error is equal to wrong password or no such email was found. So we have to change both of these to simply say wrong, uh, wrong email or password like that now you don't really have to do this all the time uh, this is just one measure that you can uh, give to your website if you want to be very specific that's fine you can tell them whether it's the email or the password that's wrong but for the sake of this tutorial we're going to do it this way so at this point if I go back to my uh, website here and type in something that doesn't exist and hit login I just get wrong email or password so if I'm a hacker I don't know which of these two is actually wrong and which one is correct at that point okay so that's one way to obscure your information now the second one is to make sure that uh, while you are in production mode you have your errors on so you can debug your, uh, your website for example if in here I had an error let's say I forgot this semicolon there and I go back here and try to refresh my page what I'm going to get is a syntax error now this error is important for when I'm designing the website otherwise uh, if I don't get errors I'm just going to get an empty page and I won't know why the page is empty this will make it impossible to find the error so this is important however when your website is live on the internet you don't want to be showing this kind of information because right here once you see this uh, let me zoom in a little bit here 
So if somebody is using your website and then they see this error, they're going to know exactly uh, where your login.php file actually resides on your website, the path to that file. So they're going to know this is the login.php page and it's in a folder called classes. So right here, I'll know that there's a folder called classes on this website and I can target that folder or this folder right here. So errors should be switched off once you deploy your website. So that's one step of having security through obscurity. All right, so let's go back here and let me see uh, before I switch that off. Let me switch that, let me, let me redo. Let me redo what I had done. Okay, there we go. So I remove that to make sure the error is still there. So one way we switch off errors is to use the php.ini file, which you have access to even on your website. So if you uh, you have a hosting account on the, uh, on the internet, you're going to have access to your PHP INI file, or you can ask your administrator about that. But on your local machine, uh, where there's Apache here, you can click on the admin um, or the config, I think that's it, and then hit php.ini. Okay, so this uh, PHP INI file opens up in, uh, in Notepad, like so. So this is where all the settings for PHP actually reside. So these ones with the semicolon at the beginning are commented out, so they are not actually active. So all you have to worry about are those that do not have a semicolon at the beginning. So let's use the find feature because we are looking for a specific uh, setting called display errors. It's like that. So let me find that one and there we go right away. But as you can see, this is a uh, commented out it's simply showing you that the default value is on and in the development environment it should be on and when you are you release your website it should be off but let's find the actual setting so there we go so as you can see this one has no semicolon at the beginning and display errors is on so if i put this at off i change it to off like this and then i'm i save this file so once I save, I have to stop Apache and start it again for those uh, settings to actually take effect. Okay, so it just takes a second. And now if I refresh my page, you see that I don't get any error whatsoever. And this is what you need for when you deploy your website so that even when there's an error, you don't release sensitive information. But while you are designing your website, it's very important to see your errors. So let's go back and change uh, that setting. So we still have the PHP INI file on. So let me put that to on. And also while we are still here, I can uh, show you one more thing, uh, a few settings that are important here. There's a setting for max upload size, for example. So if you search for uh, in case you are trying to upload a file and you find that it giving you errors, sometimes it's because uh, your file image is too large. So you can increase these sizes. Uh, for example, the post max size and the max, um, like this one, upload max file size. So 40 megabytes for me or max file uploads, how many files you can upload at one time. All right, so I'm going to save my file with the uh, errors turned on this time and stop this Apache and start it again, just to make sure. And go back to my uh, website and refresh. And I get my error back. All right, so let me put my semicolon there so we stop getting this error. And there we go. So wrong email or password is more obscure and that's a good thing. All right, so in the next video, we're going to look at one, uh, a few more security features we can add to our website to make it more secure. I'll see you in the next video.